Hi, Heather here from Creative Kiwi. This video is for those of you who want to do the um, Crazy Patch Christmas tree and have either maybe not done Crazy Patch before or just like to watch things to see how they're done. As with all our videos, the videos are designed to go with the written instructions, all the details in the written instructions. This just sort of shows you the different techniques that we use when we make the design. Now a bit boring, I've just done mine in silvers and whites, although I've used a lot of texture, which is what I like about Crazy Pitch. You can use materials that maybe you can't use often in embroidery. So I've added a bit, well I've actually used bits of lace, I've used a bit of old curtain. Um, but if you want to go for a more traditional uh, multicolour Crazy Pitch, have a look at our Crazy Pitch Inspiration page, I'll put a link at the end of this. Uh, we have got some stunning designs that other, other, some of the ladies from the Creative Kiwi group have done. Now this particular design is not really reversible. We do do a nice backing on it so that it's neat on the back and I'll, I'll show you a picture of it. Um, I mean, you could put a pattern fabric on the back and it would be okay. But I guess most of the de or all the details done on the front of the design, then we put on the backing. It depends how, what you want to use the design for. If it's going to be hanging on a wall and you're never going to see the back, then you could just use your normal bobbin thread. Uh, what I've done is I have actually used the same bobbin thread just on the final step of each section so that it, um, it matches on the back. It's, it's, it's completely up to you. It's personal preference on, on how you want to do it. So anyway, let's get on with it so you can see how the design is actually made. And hopefully you can send me some pictures of what you'll do with it. Let's go. Okay, the first thing we always do with these designs is hoop your water soluble stabilizer, the fabric type, not the plastic stuff. And I have two layers here on the hoop. And the first thing you do, even though it's really hard to see on this video, is you stitch the first line or first color, which is the uh, guideline. And then you place your piece of batting over the hoop. And you stitch colour two, which is it gives you the fabric placement lines. And we don't give you detailed um, cutting sizes for the crazy patch strips, mainly because if you want to be fussy cutting something, or you just want to get that bit of lace like I'm doing now, um, you might might need different sizes. Basically, they're scraps. So there you go. We've got our fabric placement line, and we're going to do our first piece of fabric, which you can see is just a tiny wee bit. And really simple, stitch it down. Now all the segments follow exactly the same process. So I'm going into a bit of detail for this first one, but the next ones we'll just skip through. So you put your piece of fabric down and you're just going to be trimming away the excess where the rest or on the inside or where the rest of the design's gonna go just to stop the fabric bulk. You're not worrying about the sides because we're gonna cut them later. You can see there, I'm using a little bit of, it's, it's kind of a lacy type thing actually. Um, I've just got the white fabric underneath it. And as you can see, I'm just checking to make sure that everything fits in. That is so, that's the bit I like about Crazy Patches. You can use different fabrics and it's really great texture. So there you go, we're stitching that down. And it's just, the uh, machine's going back to where it's going to start again. So don't worry if you think it's going around twice, that's what it's doing. Here we go, the same thing again, we're cutting away the excess. Now the key to all this is having sharp scissors, and I have to admit I need to get mine sharpened, so I actually have a bit of a struggle with this one, and I'm going to blame my children for that. So yeah, I need to get my scissors sharpened, but it really is the key to all appliques. As you see, it's, it's just the inside that we're doing. I'm not worrying about the edges. Now you can remove your hoop and do this if you like. I just, um, it's practice. I tend to do it at the hoop. Now we've got fabric three. And, and this is a, a perfect example of fabric that I wouldn't use in embroidery normally. It's a really thin sort of, well I guess a polyester type thing, which, you know, let's face it, if, if you wanted to embroider a pretty design on it, you'd have to either put five layers of cutaway on it or it would just pass it completely but it's perfect perfect for that crazy bitch but you know what we're going to do now we're just going to cut away that excess 
So it's actually quite simple. If you follow these instructions and you say every segment's the same, you'll have this done. And it looks harder than it is. The next step is just doing the placement line for the baubles. Well, I should have said right at the start, I just use one colour throughout here. Now if, if you're doing multi -co multiple colours, just pick a colour, I call it construction thread, pick a colour that's just going to blend in if you can. Once again, what are you going to do here? You're just going to cut away the excess. Now, I did remove that one from the hoop because I'm trying to cut around a video camera, which isn't that easy. Basically, all this construction is done with one thread. I actually changed the thread colour about now, actually, because um, I'm going to be doing the zigzagging and I'm going to be doing the quilting and on this particular design I did all the quilting in, in just white. So I did the quilting in white and the decorative stitches in silver. Now the design's done so you can choose multiple. You know, if you've got a black fabric you can put black quilting and then the next patch is red, you can do red quilting, it's completely up to you. So there we go, now we're just zigzagging the inner edges. So this again we do on every segment and it's just to stop um, any edges coming apart basically while we're doing the, the um, quilting. So there we go. Now I'm just going to go off and do the, I'm not going to bore you with all the stitching, so basically all the quilting stitches are done in the white and then all the decorative stitches are done in the silver. Okay, so now what you want to do is add your backing fabric. I use cutaway on this type of design basically because, um, as I say, it's not a, not a completely reversible design. So, with cutaway, you don't have to worry about fraying, and it's really, it's, I've got lots of it. Um, you can always use a cotton fabric, you can use felt. When you add the backing fabric, it's going to stitch twice around it, so you've got a nice edge to cut with. Which is the next step, you take the hoop from the machine and you're going to cut away the backing fabric. See how easy the cutaway is, is so there's no, you don't have to worry about any uh, threads or anything like that with cutaway. So you're removing it from the back and the front. So if you have any queries or you have problems with the cutting or getting things um, close enough we do have uh, quite a few blogs on the website with different techniques other people have um, just used so it's personal preference uh, and practice it's definitely practice but yes yeah, so if you're having problems have a look at the blogs and or um, join the uh, creative kiwi facebook group you can certainly ask a question in there and you'll have many people give you um, how they do things or what maybe what sort of um, Helen they use, batting. It's a mine of information. And so here we're just cutting away all the fabrics. Sharps is definitely the key. So you're going to put that back in your hoop and the only thing to do now is use going to be a zigzag around the edge and just the last of the decorative stitching. And so this is where I actually changed the bobbin actually and I put in the silver thread in the bobbin and now I say zigzag and now we're on to the second stitch. And I think here we go. There you go, it's done. So that's what segment one looks like. Yeah, every segment's done exactly the same as that. So if you can do this one, then I'm the most. Here we are, we've removed it from the hoop and we're just cutting away the excess stabilizer. Not too close to those edges so that you don't cut any satin stitch. Uh, we're going to remove the 
the rest of it with um, a Q-tip later. But the bits that you do need to actually keep an eye on is this, the raw edges. So cut them as close as you can without cutting um, to those stitched lines. They're, they're, these are the bits that are going to be joined. So obviously you can have two lots like that together. So the closer you get it, the better. Okay, we're going to whip through the next knot um, rather than showing every single or videoing every single piece. I've just sort of done it step by step. You can refer back to this beginning bit if, you, if it's your first time. But once again, you're going to put water soluble stabilizer, you're going to stitch your outline, you're going to add your batting, which gives you your fabric placement, put your fabric one, trim it, fabric two. That's where my curtain material is, and then you trim that, and then we're going to put on fabric three, and trim that, see it's not too hard. The next bit you probably know is the bauble placement lines. Put your fabric over that, and then trim back, then we're going to zigzag just those inner seams, so once again it's just in your construction. Fabric, uh, a construction thread, sorry, then you do your quilting stitches, which I did in white, and your decorative stitches I did in silver. You add your backing, attach it going around twice, cut away your excess fabric front and back, and then return it to the home, oh sorry, return it to the machine for the joining. Now the first step is it's just going to do a zigzag to stop where you're going to join your first segment. It's not too hard. You're going to place the first completed one against the the machine you're matching stitching lines. Now other members have other ways of doing this. I know Kay shares on her videos uh, how she tapes her joins in place. My machine just does not seem to like tape so I try not to use it. Um, for me because I've had practice just stopping and starting is how I do it. Now this video is actually sped up a wee bit because I don't do it quite as fast as that. Practice will do it. You will find a way to do the joining. And then the next step really is just uh, the decorative stitches and you've done it. Section 2 done. Section 3 is done exactly the same way following the same steps. Put your stabiliser, add your batting, and then your stitched colour one, which is your placement line. So there, fabric two, put a bit of lace there, and the trim. Fabric three, trim. Fabric four, trim. Then we've got the baubles of it. Yes, there we go. Once again, trim. Then you've got your zigzag and your quilting and the white, your decorative stitches. All this is, is put on in the instructions. You add your backing, goes around twice, and cut away your ex take the remove from the hoop, cut away your excess fabric front and back. Back on and we're up to joining again. And same thing again. It's probably easier with these curves because it, it is quite, it's like a jigsaw, you can actually see where it joins and it fits in quite nicely. Once again, just stop and start as you need to, whatever method you find best. And there we go, we've got the third segment joined. And once again, you carry on just doing, I think there's just one more decorative stitch and the edge. And there you go, it's done. Remove it from the hoop, cut away the excess uh, stab uh, so sta yeah, stabilizer and just trim those raw edges. Ready for number four. Same again. You outline, you add your batting, you put your fabric one and trim it. Fabric two, it's a bit hard to see, but up the top there, top left. Fabric three, 
right up the top left, but it's very hard to see. Fabric four. You've got your baubles. And you trim them. So this is all in the instructions. So don't think you have to go off this video to work out what's going on. Get your quilting. Decorative stitches on the inside. And add your back in. And cut away your excess. And put it back on the hoop so you can do the joining. Now this one's a double banger, so I've actually done two joins. So what we're going to do here is you're stitching along the top first. Once again, right on top of those stitch lines. I must admit, watching these videos play back, it looks like my hands are a lot closer than they are. And see how I do it, I just do a wee bit. And just, just like when you're sewing, you know, when you're doing normal sewing, if you were zigzagging this on a sewing machine, um, it's the same idea. And so that's just going to stitch right down there to the, to the right hand side. Now it's just going to stop, the machine will stop automatically, and then we're just going to do a straight stitch back along where we've already been. This is just to get the machine in place for the next join. And so it's easier to join downwards. So there you go, we're just checking it again. Now I'll take the time now to apologise for any dogs snoring in the background. Um, I, I tend to do um, these voiceovers in the middle of the night. And it actually happens to be 5.17 in the morning actually. So everybody is asleep apart from the dogs who are next to me. Um, now, I'm not a video maker, okay? I am a, a digitizer, so I do apologize. I know it's not as professional as some, but I just, it's really to show you the techniques involved. So, there you go, you've done probably the, the hardest join, I would guess. And now it's just back onto the machine to do your final stitches. And there you go. Really, really starting to look like a tree now. I'm pretty much sure you could tell me what to do next. Again, the next section you do your outline, you add your batting, and then you've only got two fabrics this time, so it's this one you can whisk through. Fabric one and trim, fabric two and trim. Add your baubles. Then you do your zigzag quilting and decorative stitches. Add your backing. Remove it from the machine, trim away your excess fabric. And then back to the machine so you can start joining. There we go. So I think the curves are easier to join than straight lines. You can see, like a jigsaw, you really can see where they go. And it's just about finished. And definitely practice, practice, practice. It's not to say I don't still make errors, believe me I do, I still have times when I've had to undo and, and um, things just haven't aligned, uh, but the majority, it's just, it is definitely practice. Right, the joining's done. Finish off just doing, it's just the second stitch around the edge now. That's quite a quick one, that one. Now that's the 8x8 hoop size, um, so you know if you've got a bigger hoop or if 6x10 or, or 8x10 you can make a really huge, huge Christmas tree. Right, we're on to the last one now. Same thing. 
Okay, so the stars, the first fabric. And you've got a little bit at the top. Down bottom right. On the left hand side. Got your ball balls. And zigzag quilting and decorative stitches. And backing. Doing the cutaway. Back onto the joining. This one's just right down just the bottom here. It's not too big of a join. And then you're onto the second stitch. Now you can add so much to these trees. Um, I think I'm probably going to add some uh, gems or something like that, but I mean, you could, you could put all sorts of red trinkets. Um, put people's initials on the baubles, that's what I was originally going to do, was put um, their names on them, but it wasn't quite big enough, but the larger ones might be, but there you go, that's it done. And there's the, yeah, that's how big it gets. So the second sample of the Christmas tree that we did was a what we call the one fabric version. So there are two fabrics in it obviously because you've got the contrast for your tree and your, uh, or for the bauble, sorry, and the star. But the main difference is instead of having the, putting all your fabrics on and trimming them, you just use one fabric per segment. Um, it's all in the instructions. It is faster to do, obviously, because you're not doing all the cutting and trimming. And there's still a lot you can do with the one fabric because you could use different kind of threads to make to give the decoration. Or like we've done, we did um, we actually did black vinyl for this one, so we did all the stitching, all the quilting stitches were in the black, and we used just a gold thread for the decorative stitches and the baubles. Now the reason we put the did the vinyl was when I wanted to try vinyl designs but the other reason was I had an idea of putting uh, tea lights in the baubles so you can certainly do that on um, using cotton maybe for the tree but definitely for the baubles you'd want to be putting something that um, won't fray because you're going to have to poke a hole in the, in the actual bauble part or as we did in the star so uh, vinyl would be perfect for that so you could do your tree, your crazy patch, um, and just maybe have vinyl for the bauble in the star, or you could use a felt, a felt material for the baubles, um, or just any non-fraying fabric, because as I say, you're going to have to poke a hole in it, so you don't want to have it fraying everywhere. But yeah, so the black, uh, black vinyl, um, gold vinyl, and then at the end, all I did was I actually used, I think they're called walls, which come with your cam snaps, to poke a hole, basically, but you could use scissors, whatever you like. Um, and then I actually did use scissors to wiggle around to make the hole bigger and then I've just put uh, a little tea light at the back. I didn't have any of the um, lights that you get now, that are just basically on a bit of wire and they're quite a bit smaller than the tea lights so I didn't have any available so I did just use a tea light but you can certainly make a really cool design using those lights. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope it shows you how easy it is to make the Crazy Patch Christmas tree and I really look forward to seeing all the photos of all the really unique designs that Christmas trees that you will make. Uh, that's the really awesome thing with Crazy Patches, you can be guaranteed to not be too the same. Thank you. Bye.